Hello, and welcome to this presentation. We discuss how to deploy the virtual machine of a virtual appliance into the Oracle VM environment on the Oracle Private Cloud Appliance. A virtual appliance is a file that includes a bundle of one or more virtual machines, a descriptor file, and any other files needed, such as certificates. Another term for this kind of file is assembly, but the file extension is always .ova. To deploy the virtual appliance, you create a virtual machine in the Oracle VM Manager console interface, and there are two places you can do this. You can launch the interface to create the virtual machine from the repository virtual appliance list, and this list is displayed when you select the virtual appliances folder of a repository. You can also launch the interface from the top of the navigation area after selecting the Servers and VMs tab of the Oracle VM Manager console. Before deploying the virtual machine, it is best practice to have prepared the network and ensured the repository has enough capacity for the virtual disk that is created. When you start the virtual machine, you use the Oracle VM console to access it. You are given a series of prompts to create a minimal but required network configuration and a root password. After the first boot dialog completes, you can log into the virtual machine as root to complete any further configuration that's needed. Let's see how to create the virtual machine. After logging into the Oracle VM console, navigate to the Repositories tab. Select the repository where the virtual appliance resides and click on the Virtual Appliances folder. Now select the virtual appliance from the list. In the toolbar above the virtual appliance list, click the icon to create a virtual machine. When the dialog appears, select the server pool that was created with the Oracle Private Cloud Appliance Tenant Group where you want the virtual machine to run. Next, select the virtual machine and click OK to continue. The job appears in the Job Summary display. While the virtual machine creation is underway, navigate to the Servers and VMs tab in the Oracle VM Manager console. Here, select the server pool in the navigation pane, then change the perspective to virtual machines in the management pane. After a short time, the virtual machine creation completes. The status in the job summary pane changes from running to success, and the virtual machine appears on the list in the management pane. You can review the virtual machine details by clicking on the small triangle on the list for this virtual machine. However, we'll edit this virtual machine by clicking on the pencil icon in the toolbar above the list. In the Edit dialog box, you can change many aspects of the virtual machine and its configuration. Here, we'll change the name to something shorter and more readable for this appliance. Enable high availability if the virtual machine policy requires it. The operating system for this virtual machine is Oracle Linux 7 Update 6. Change the operating system setting to Oracle Linux 7. Last, you can change the memory, processor, or priority settings if you want, but you should keep the domain type and other settings the same. Click on the Networks tab now. This virtual machine has no network resource yet, so we'll assign the network that was created to support this virtual machine deployment. Click OK to save the configuration changes for this virtual machine. Make sure the virtual machine in the list is selected, and click the green triangle, or the Start icon, in the toolbar. Then, click the Terminal icon to launch the virtual machine console. The console displays startup messages while the virtual machine boots. We'll concentrate on the console to work through the first boot configuration and initial login to the virtual machine. After several seconds, the first prompt of the first boot process appears. This prompt asks for the host name of the virtual machine. Enter the name appweb underscore zero one. Notice that the underscore character causes the cursor to change position in the console. Continue to type as you normally would. The next prompt is for the network device for the VNIC on the network created to support this virtual machine deployment. Here, enter ETH0, and we enter yes at the prompt to activate the interface on system boot. You can
can enter static or DHCP in response to the protocol prompt, depending on your particular network configuration. If you enter a value and decide to change it with the backspace key, you see the slash in each character you want to erase. Continue to type, as you see here, where I entered DHCP. I'm using DHCP for this demonstration. However, if you enter static at this prompt, you will see additional prompts for the virtual machine IP address, NetMask, and DNS server IP addresses. The last prompt is for the root password. Password checking is enforced, so, for instance, you cannot enter dictionary words, and the password must contain mixed case letters, numbers, and special characters. After entering the password, the initial boot process continues for a short time. After the virtual machine has started, the login prompt appears. Login is root using the password you just provided at the first boot configuration. After logging in, we see that the Etsy hosts file does not include the host, so that has to be updated. The IFCFG file for the device ETH0 shows values consistent with the responses provided to the first boot dialog. You complete the virtual machine network configuration at this time, for example, checking or editing the Etsy host file in resolve.conf. The virtual machine is ready for further application configuration if necessary. This ends the demonstration of virtual machine deployment. Thank you for watching.